Hey everyone, it's Mallory here with All About Cats, and here's my cat, Forrest. And in this week's video, we're going to be talking about how to introduce cats to one another. So we often think about cats as solitary creatures, but in reality, our cats uh, naturally uh, connect with other cats, both in family groups and in social groups of cats that are not related to one another. If you look at a feral cat, they'll often exist within a feral cat community. And so cats very often are better off with other cats in the home. So it's often a very beneficial choice to bring more than one cat into your household but you have to do it right. Cats are territorial and without the proper introductions, things can get pretty nasty and the cats might just never get along. So setting the right foundation is a really important part of introducing a new cat to your home, whether they're a young cat or an old cat. Uh, you're always going to want to do a proper introduction in order to get things off to the best possible start. So based on things I've learned from cat behaviorist Melina Grin, who works with us here at All About Cats, as well as Dr. Rachel Geller, also someone we've had the opportunity to work with at All About Cats, as well as things I've learned from Jackson Galaxy and other sources, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the different steps that you're going to want to follow in order to do a great introduction between two cats. As with pretty much any successful project, the first step of introducing two cats to one another is preparation. Your first step is going to involve two things. One is preparing a sanctuary room, and the second is preparing the rest of the house. So let's start off with that sanctuary room. So anytime you're bringing a new cat into the house, whether there are other cats in the home or they're coming into an empty house just with people, you're going to want to give them a designated area that is pretty much theirs alone. So it's not a place you're using a lot. And in the case of a multiple cat home, it's not a place that your other cat tends to go into very often. And this room should be quiet, warm, safe, and it should be stocked with all of your cat essentials. So you can check out the link in the description for a video on all of the things you're going to need uh, when you're bringing a new cat home. And this room is going to be stocked with all of that stuff. So you're going to need a litter box, you're going to need food and water bowls, you're going to need some toys that your cat can play with on their own. It's also important that this room doesn't have any hidey holes or places where the cat can go and hide. The idea is to encourage them to feel comfortable in the space rather than just spending the next week or so hidden under a bed. So if you can, block off any areas where this cat can go hide and encourage them to just somehow wander around this room and, and learn to get comfortable there. And then the second part of your preparation process is going to be in the rest of the house. So you put all of those cat things into the sanctuary room, you're also going to want to make sure that the rest of the house is properly catified. That's the term from Jackson Galaxy. So um, this is going to include uh, some vertical space or vertical territory, meaning the cat should have some places where they can climb. Uh, this will include shelving, it'll include uh, tall scratching posts, it'll include trees. You can also just clear out spaces on bookshelves if you don't have the budget for cat-specific objects. This is going to allow both your resident and new cat to get some space from what's happening on the ground level, and this helps the cats to kind of assess one another and get some space in a way that's safe and healthy for them and doesn't lead to any type of territorial conflict. Um, you're also going to want to provide plenty of bedding, places where the cats can sleep uh, in a manner of their choosing, and you're also going to want to make sure that there are some hiding places where all of the cats can go if they need to cool off. If you're not sure where to get these products and if you're looking for stylish products that will fit in with your home decor, I'd recommend checking out Tuft & Paw. So they offer a wide variety of cat products, all tastefully and thoughtfully designed and intended to fit in with your home decor. You can get litter boxes, cat trees, beds, and everything you need in order to catify your home and make sure that you both of your cats are going to have the space they need. They're also offering a 10% discount to all All About Cats viewers, so be sure to check out the link in the description and enter All About Cats 10 at checkout to get that discount. So once you've done your preparation phase, you've prepared the rest of the house and you've prepared that specific sanctuary room, it's going to be time to bring home your new arrival and plop them down in the sanctuary room. So this cat is not going to have any visual contact with your resident cat or cats. They're just going to make contact with this room. 
Confining them to a specific limited area makes it a lot easier for them to associate with the territory. The small territory is less overwhelming and they're able to scent mark and get accustomed to it more quickly. Uh, so it's a much less scary experience than giving them free reign of the house at once. Um, so you're going to put them in this room, they have everything they need, and they can stay there for a week or maybe a little bit more than a week. Uh, the main thing is to watch to see how comfortable they become if they start prancing towards the door right away and they want to get out and they look completely comfortable. Well, maybe they don't need to be in the sanctuary room anymore. But as long as they're showing some signs of fear and trepidation about the rest of the house, they can stay in that room. You're going to want to go into the room, uh, spend some time with the cat, distract them, play with them, help them to feel happy and enjoy the new space, um, but you do not want that cat coming into the room. You don't want them to have any visual contact. When the cats make visual contact, that's when you start seeing that adversarial uh, dynamic, the lock eyes, and then maybe they'll start fighting. So you want them to be away from one another, you want to avoid eye contact, you want the new cat to establish a territorial bond first. After you start seeing your new cat getting a little more comfortable with their new sanctuary room, you can start doing scent and space swapping. And so this is a way to get the cats introduced by smell before they get introduced uh, visually. So you're going to take the new cat into an area where your original cat or older cat uh, spends a lot of time and then you're going to bring the other cat into the sanctuary room. No visual contact, no contact between the cats, just contact between them and the smells of the other cats. And so this is called space swapping. And so this will go on for a few minutes. Um, if there are any signs of discomfort, bring the cats back to the place that they're used to. And you can continue repeating this for as long as you need to uh, before the cats start seeming comfortable with the smell of the other cat. Another way you can do this is by doing just scent swapping. So you're going to wipe down the cats with towels or maybe you can just use some of their bedding and then you're going to bring those items into those familiar rooms. Either way, the idea is to introduce the cats to the smell of the other cats before they're physically in the presence of one another. Once you've done this for a couple of days, um, it's going to be time to start making a little bit more of a connection between the cats themselves and you do this through uh, feeding uh, on the opposite sides of the door. So you're going to have your new cat in their sanctuary, their familiar room, and you're going to put their food next to the door and you're going to put the other cat's food on the other side of the door and you're going to let them eat on either side of that door. If they show any signs of discomfort, if you're noticing the cat kind of getting tense, backing off, running away, uh, pinning their ears back, looking nervous or not eating at all, then you're going to want to move the bowl back a little bit. And once you're right on the edge, the closest you can get to that door without causing those signs of fear, that's where you're going to feed them. So you're going to be on either side of the door. They're going to be able to hear the other cat. They're going to be able to smell the other cat. They'll know the other cat is there, um, but they're having their food. This is what they have to do. And it's a nice introduction. Because the cats are enjoying a meal, it's a little bit more of a positive association as well. And you're going to proceed with this, bringing the bowls closer and closer and closer and closer to the door every mealtime, just inching closer. And then eventually they'll be right on either side of the door, basically eating together. And it's going to be time to start that visual introduction. There are a few ways to do the visual introduction. Uh, you can erect a baby gate in the door that these cats have been eating on either side of. You can also put in a screen door. You can also just crack the door open a little bit and that will allow the cats to see one another. But at any rate, the point is to let the cats see each other while they're eating as usual. The process works the same. If you start noticing some discomfort, you can just dial things back and then try again next time. Um, but the idea is to let the cats see one another while they're engaging in this pleasant experience of eating their food. And once you see, again, that the cats seem like they're comfortable seeing this other cat while having their meal, uh, you're going to be ready to have some supervised time in the same room. So what's important here is that the cats are distracted and they're having fun. Uh, the cat should not be preoccupied with the fact that there's some other cat sitting there in the corner. 
both of the cats should be playing. And then if you start noticing, again, any kind of apprehension, pin back ears, signs of nervousness, well, it's time to stop. Uh, generally, you can do this for maybe 15 minutes a day and see how it goes. When you notice that the cats are getting more comfortable, you can extend the session. You can kind of push the boundaries a little bit. Um, and eventually you should be able to have the two cats in the same room playing, having fun without any sort of discomfort around the other cat. Again, it's really important that during this phase, both of the cats have access to their own resources. So if one cat gets kind of stressed out, they can go to their top of their cat tree and they can chill out and watch the cat from above. This gives them a more powerful position and it prevents any kind of pecking order from developing where the dominant cat is really picking on the less dominant cat and they have nowhere to go. The benefit of this kind of catification is that the less dominant cat always has a safe place to go to and it's not going to become kind of a vicious cycle of beating them down in that hierarchy. A few tips for making sure that your home is properly catified for multi-cat happiness are to make sure, again, that you have multiple litter boxes available. Make sure the litter boxes are distributed through the home so that they're not too close to each other. And you also want to make sure that they're not backed into a corner or even covered litter boxes can present an issue because one cat can get kind of backed in there and then an aggressor will intimidate them. So you want to avoid that situation of developing. You're also going to want to make sure that the cats have their own resources for eating and drinking. That's going to be really important. And then you're going to want to make sure that they have their own space for that eating and drinking too. They should be able to eat and drink in separate places. You're also going to want to make sure that the cats have separate places for sleeping, grooming, relaxing. Um, they should all have separate stuff. And then once you follow these steps, it's just a matter of letting the cats get to know one another, play with each other, get used to each other, and warm up over time. It's really up to the cats how close they're going to become. There's no way of forcing two cats to become best friends. You're not necessarily going to see even properly introduced cats aloe grooming, hanging out, snuggling. Uh, it's really up to the cats, so maybe you'll be lucky and you'll have these two cats who are best friends and hang out all the time, and maybe you won't. Maybe they'll have a little bit more of a distant relationship, but at least they'll be comfortable with one another and not having all these territorial disputes and problems that we see in multi-cat homes that were not set up properly. If you do find that your cats are not getting along so well, even after you followed all of these steps, you can always go back to square one and just reintroduce the cats all over again. Maybe you took things too quickly, maybe you didn't do things quite right. It is possible to reintroduce cats to one another. You can use synthetic pheromone products like Fellaway in order to create sort of an illusion of uh, comfort in the territory. So this is always a good supplement um, for the different steps listed here. So I hope you found this video helpful and I hope that it helps you to have a successful introduction between two cats. I will put links to uh, resources in the description including the article on All About Cats on how to introduce two cats um, and I'll also put a link to Tuft and Paw so you can redeem that 10% discount I mentioned earlier. So again, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're interested in more cat videos like this one, uh, please subscribe to the All About Cats channel. We put out something new about once a week, so there's always something to look forward to. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.